Hello and welcome back everyone. I'm Linnea Lucan, Research Fellow with the Heartland Institute's Arthur B. Robinson Center on Climate and Environmental Policy. This is the fourth episode of our energy series, and this time I'm going to dive right back into what's broadly categorized as a biomass energy. My focus here will be on solid fuels like wood pellets and municipal waste. These alternative energy sources are said to be greener, low emissions, and even net zero on balance. It turns out that similar to the issue with ethanol fuel, that's not quite the case. Wood-based biomass in particular is less energy efficient, damaging to forest ecosystems, and might even have a higher emissions issue than the fossil fuels they are meant to replace. So let's get into it. In the last video, I classified ethanol and biodiesel as biofuels. These fall under the same biomass energy umbrella as what we're going to talk about today. Biomass is usually classified as a renewable organic material that's burned for energy. This can be virgin timber or wood, wood chips, um, leftovers like what you get with sawmills and other timber industry waste, some crops like corn and soybeans, uh, crop waste like the hulls and other parts that you would normally use, garbage like paper and yard scraps, and even animal dung and human septic waste in some countries that are a little, let's say, poorer off than we are. For the purpose of this video, I'm not talking about burning wood directly for cooking like on a campout or for heat like in a wood burning stove or a fireplace. Even though around the globe, wood biomass is commonly used for those kinds of needs. We're going to focus a lot on the wood and timber byproduct segment here because it makes up the bulk of our solid fuel biomass energy, especially what the Energy Information Administration calls densified biomass fuel or compressed wood pellets. Those pellets are made from wood that's shredded into teeny tiny bits, ground down further, and then it often needs to be dried in a kiln until the moisture content is reduced to something like 10%. It then needs to be conditioned so that it will take to being pressed into a pellet form more readily, and then it will finally be compressed down into that pellet in a pellet mill. In total, biomass makes up about 5% of the energy use in the United States, with 2% of annual consumption coming from wood-based biofuels. The big biomass users, though, are in Europe. The UK is the single largest consumer of wood pellets. 21% of all pellets burned in the world are used in the UK. Of those, the majority come from pellet manufacturers that are in the United States or Canada, but especially the southeastern United States. The majority of densified wood pellets produced come from the European sources, though, which makes it interesting that the UK gets most of theirs from North America. So what's so good about biomass? Or at least, what do people claim is so good about it? Well, proponents say that it's a renewable, low carbon emitting fuel that's a climate friendly alternative to coal. Evidence though suggests that the benefits of burning wood pellets in particular for fuel are being oversold by quite a good margin. So first, densified pellets are supposed to be higher energy content than some of the other wood-based biomass fuels. However, the energy density of even good quality wood pellets is a lot lower than that of coal, half as much in fact, meaning that it takes twice as much wood pellets to generate the same amount of electrical power. Good quality anthracite, which is most often used in metallurgy and manufacturing because it has a really high energy output, puts out three times as many megajoules per cubic meter of material as a high quality wood pellet. No matter what, if you're switching from coal to biomass, you're sacrificing on at least energy efficiency. On emissions even, biomass power plants emit 50 to 85% more CO2 than a modern coal plant, and more than three times as much as a natural gas-fueled power plant. Now, personally, I'm not particularly concerned about carbon dioxide emissions, but if you are, biomass is not the way forward. In addition, there is the carbon dioxide emitted when turning source material into wood pellets, and also shipping wood pellets across the Atlantic is not carbon neutral, so there's that. Um, the argument for biomass, especially wood-based, is that it's more carbon neutral generally, since growing more trees for fuel takes up carbon dioxide in the process. So they have this idea that we grow a tree, we burn it, and then we grow another tree. So the carbon dioxide emitted during the burning is taken up by future growth. But if you really think about it, the math doesn't 
bear out. In the real world, it takes decades for trees to grow, meaning the huge spike in emissions now from burning it won't be offset for another 40 to 104 or so years. This is assuming that the trees are not harvested before they're able to take up an equivalent amount of carbon dioxide, and that the planted trees have an equivalent storage capacity as those that were burned, which more often than not is not the case. The kinds of pine trees planted for biomass are typically something like a loblolly pine, which grow quickly and are harvested before they reach their full storage potential at maturity. One study found that replacing coal with biomass results in net increases in especially short-term CO2. This is undermining the narrative that biomass is a good replacement for fossil fuels for the sake of emissions reductions, especially if we only have 15 years or whatever it is that they're saying to solve the climate crisis Burning extra CO2 in the form of biomass now makes no sense at all. Most of the feedstock for densified biomass comes from residual material. This includes leftover branches and bark and such from logging, um, wood chips, leftover wood from construction projects even, or trees that have defects like big holes or twisted trunks that make them impossible to use for lumber. The next highest category comes from sawmill residuals. But the third largest source of wood that's made into pellets to ship overseas actually comes from roundwood or pulpwood. That is to say, trees that are grown in plantations and then cut down specifically for the purpose of making that fuel. These plantations often take the place of a natural hardwood forest, trading those trees for pines that grow faster and are easier to manage. Studies on ecological carbon balances show that less carbon is actually held in these fast growing trees than would have been in the original hardwood forest. Because of the rise in demand for biofuels, driven largely by government mandates, these kinds of tree farms are becoming much more widespread and have actually led to serious deforestation issues in Baltic nations, as well as other parts of Northern Europe. The amount of wildlife habitat destroyed to satisfy the appetite for biomass to meet these government carbon dioxide goals is only going to grow with increasing mandates. Of course, we still need paper products and lumber. These kinds of tree farming operations will always exist, but expanding beyond the residual materials for densified biomass and growing trees just to make pellets or chips to burn just doesn't make sense. Research done by environmentalist groups show that these pellet fuel production facilities and the plants that burn pellets for power are often big emitters of air pollutants, like particulates in particular, and even volatile organic compounds, or VOCs, that are normally regulated by the Clean Air Act. These facilities often get overlooked by regulators because of their status as the green power option. Not all solid biomass fuel is wasteful, though. Burning garbage for power like they do in countries like Japan, because they don't have very much space for landfills, is a really good way to reduce the number of those landfills that you need. It's not as energy efficient as fossil fuels, and it certainly isn't going to save you any carbon dioxide emissions, but it is an efficient use of land. Using residual materials from sawmills and the timber industry at large is a decent way to make use of that scrap material that would otherwise just sit around doing nothing for us other than decomposing and well, in that process, emitting carbon dioxide and methane, but again, compared to fossil fuels, as a fuel, it is not very energy efficient. Humans have burned wood for energy for our entire existence. This tradition is not going away, nor should you want it to. However, calling something like densified biomass fuel a green alternative energy is inaccurate, the worst form of false advertising. It does not pollute less than fossil fuels, it emits just as much, if not more, carbon dioxide and clearly has a negative impact on wildlife and natural habitats. That's easy to see. This is particularly true for trees that are grown for the specific purpose of being cut down and burned. Mandating the use of these sources like they do in the European Union and strongly encouraging them like they do in the United States doesn't really make sense from an energy standpoint or an environmentalist one. I'd argue that it actually makes things worse on both fronts. Hey everyone, make sure to subscribe and hit the like button, and if you are so inclined, share this video. It really does help us out a lot. Also check out our weekly Climate Roundtable live stream, which is every Friday at noon central time. We sometimes get fun guests on and we always talk about climate or energy related topics, and sometimes 
broader environmental issues like biodiversity and um, pollution. In terms of this video, I've written on each one of these topics in this series, so you can find that work as well as the citations that I draw from if you search my name on heartland.org. I also have a Twitter now, at Linnea Lucan, so follow me there if you are so inclined. If you have any suggestions for future energy series videos, let me know in the comments. I do read them, so thanks for all the participation down there. And then I hope you all enjoyed this video. As always, thanks, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.